Hello everybody and welcome back into the fort. I apologize for not making a video in a little while. I've been busy doing way too many other things, uh, working on a project for work video wise that you guys will probably never see, um, as well as doing some other content on a different channel. But I am back today because I want to talk about something that I think is going to be a little serious. And it's something we all have to do as a community and this video is not going to help with this cause. It is to downplay the new Verge cycle in the Duskmorn set that's coming out very soon. So if you haven't seen the new Verge uh, Dual Lands, they do all a very similar thing. And uh, I'll use the Rakdos one as an example uh, because it kind of feels the most Duskmorn-y. Duskmorn? It, it feels the most in vogue for Duskmorn, uh, the Rakdos one. So that one is Blaze Mire Verge. It is a land that taps for a black or it taps to add red. Activate only if you control a swamp or a mountain. So why I'm saying that we all kind of have to band together here is we all have to downplay how good these cards are in Commander. Um, this feels a lot like the cards from a while ago, the Tainted cards, the Tainted Lands. Uh, tainted Peak being one of them. It uh, taps for a colorless or taps for a black and a red, black or a red, activate only if you control a swamp. So it's very similar in, in one way or another, but I think these Blaze Mire, uh, these Verges, or in this one particular, Blaze Mire Verge, will have a lot more of an application to it than the Tainted Cycle does. And here's why. The Tainted uh, lands go in a lot of decks that it might not be the best to go into. Um, I see it in dual lands or dual color uh, commander decks, but I also see it a lot in uh, three color decks, um, stuff that kind of just splashes black. And I think what happens, and this is why I'm bringing up the Tainted Cycle, what happens is people kind of skim read it. They read uh, the, you know, taps for a colorless or taps for one of the other two colors, da, 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 swamp. Okay, cool. And not notice that it has to, you have to specifically have a swamp. So if you don't have that many swamps in, say, a three color deck, um, let alone other lands with the swamp type, much like, uh, you know, shock lands, these are only going to tap for a colorless a large amount of the time. Whereas these new uh, cards from Duskmorn, like this, Blaze Meyer Verge, uh, they tap for a color no matter what. Then they also tap for the secondary color if you have a swamp or a mountain in this case. Um, the swamp or mountain does not have to be basic. And this is where I'm getting at with looking at these as uh, people possibly skimming them as they read. They see it taps for a red, they see it taps, or they see like for this one that taps for a black, they also see it taps for a red, activate if you control a swamp or a mountain. Sometimes people just don't fully process that and just say, eh, you know, I'll just throw in, you know, one of these other dual lands instead and uh, not take a look at these. But I think these have a big case for being very, very useful in Commander, uh, for example. And, and I'm even saying versus the Tainted Cycle because of the fact that you have two different land types that can cause it to become a dual land. Um, and plus it's not lost on me that it taps for a color on its own uh, versus some other lands that tap for colorless. So let's get into um, one of the points that I want to strike on, which is standard. Standard is getting better and better as the years have gone on. I think they kind of understood the assignment that people loved Commander and that standard was starting to go on the decline. And I think over the past few years, they've injected some type of new super serum into these standard sets because they've been a lot of fun to play a lot of fun to draft and a lot of people are flocking back to the standard sets so that puts into uh a little bit of concern that these verges will stay budget um 
you know, something I like to do a lot on this channel or I will continue to do now that I'm back um, is talk about budget options. I, I, I would love to sit here and say, oh, you need a dual land, play a shock and play a fetch and et cetera, et cetera. I love finding these corner case cards like the these verges that it's a perfect slot in the deck and it only costs you a dollar or two dollars or something like that. The only issue other than it, you know, a lot of magic uh, uh, commander players liking these uh, verge cards, the only issue I see is it becoming a very big thing in standard. Um, so let's take a look at a few other dual lands in standard right now and see if they um, if they could supersede these new verge uh, lands. Uh, one of the cards in standard right now is Black Cleave Cliffs. Uh, once again, sticking with Rakdos, uh, it, it enters uh, the battlefield tapped unless you control two or fewer lands. I think these are called the fast lands. Um, when it comes to this, I think in aggro decks, they're very good. Um, you know, I don't play enough standard to say to like be an aficionado on this. I'm actually starting to play arena more and more. Let me know if you guys want to see me play arena. Um, but when it comes to this type of card, I think it's very easy for people to read and, and grasp and throw it in the deck, especially if they have it and they're playing paper magic. Um, another one of the cards in standard that's a dual land is Sulphurous Springs. So one of the pain lands taps for a colorless or taps for a black or red uh, and deals one damage to you. So when it comes to these cards, I love the pain lands. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the pain lands and talismans just because most of the time you're not going to need that color. And the fact that it comes in untapped is very, very, very good for your tempo, especially in standard. Now here's my uh, final concern before I move on to one final point and then I can wrap up this short video because I was just excited about these and I wanted to jump on to talk about this. I have a couple other video ideas I was gonna do before this and then these uh, lands came out and I was like, all right, I got to talk about them. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, but this might have a similar, I, 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 I'll say issue as we had when it came to muck ducks at Markov Manor, where the surveil lands were debuted in that set. And those started off you know, on the internet and the communication and people talking about if they were going to play them or not. That was very divided. A lot of people were like, and eh, they're not that great. They come in tap, surveil, how good can it be? They're glorified scry lands is what I was hearing a lot of. But surveil is so much better than scry in, in a lot of strategies. And also it has the land types. So especially people in uh, constructed had have been able to, um, you know, 60 card and, and other formats been able to use these to great effect with, uh, I know fetch lands aren't in standard, but fetch lands and other things that fetch up uh, lands with a land type like that. But also the fact that it became the biggest uh, talking point in Commander so much so that it went into CEDH that people were talking about how good you can run these and, and people hate lands coming in tapped in CEDH. So my main concern is, you know, we can talk about these Verge lands and say that they're going to be, you know, great and hopefully they don't get too over budget. But then we see, you know, these uh, surveil lands and we kind of you, you kind of get a little like itchy under the collar because it's like, yeah, those didn't have that much steam when they came into the, the zeitgeist. And then all of a sudden they all shot up in price. And that's what I'm looking at right now. I'm trying to uh, find the price for this surveil land. Um, Raucous Theater is currently about $9, um, which once again, for a land that comes in tapped is kind of a big you know, hit to what its use is in a lot of uh, formats you would think, but this one, just the tempo and everything, it was a perfect storm. So what I need everybody to do when we come to, you know, you're watching this right now and as Desmore comes out, when you see the Verge cycle and you're around other commander players, standard players, whatever, you know, 
even if you open one in a pack and you're very excited, just kind of poker face it, you know, like, oh, hey, oh, one, of the, one of the rare lands. Oh, uh, look at this other card. And here's why. We need to keep the prices of these low. All right. I want to see these around the one and two dollar mark because I want to be able to make a lot more decks and I want to be able to put these in there. If you didn't know, I'm on Architect and I make um, a budget decks there. I make pre cons and other things on my Architect and the land slots are by far one of the hardest things to nail down when you're sticking to a budget. So more dual lands uh, that aren't too hard on your wallet. I absolutely would love to see them. Um, and before I go, I'm going to talk about one more new dual land cycle. And that is, uh, I don't know, are they all called gorges? Uh, see, I, I should have uh, paid a little bit more attention when I was setting this up. The 13 life lands. Um, but specifically, we're going to talk about the Rakdos one, Razor Trap Gorge. Um, it's a land that when it enters, it enters the battlefield tapped unless a player has 13 or less life. And then it taps for black or red. Um, so yeah, it's a, a dual land if somebody has 13 or less life. Now, I wouldn't bank on that all the time. Uh, I wouldn't even bank on that like 80% of the time that, you know, oh, I'm going to throw this in the deck and it's going to come in untapped all the time when I'm talking about commander. These are pretty good in 20 life, um, you know, formats. But when it comes to commander, it's probably not going to come in uh, untapped. However, I'll always say this. It's better than a guild gate. <laughs> um, unless you're playing gate strategies, which is trying to calm the comments. Um, but yeah, it's better than a guild gate. And it's just kind of fun. You know what I mean? Like if you have a bunch of these laying around and you're brewing a new deck, Maybe you have an aggro deck. Maybe you have a life gain drain deck. Um, maybe even like that, you you lower your own life total a lot in the deck and you you think, hey, maybe I'll be able to throw this into the deck and I'll be the one under 13. Um, I think that they're just fun and it'll once you play them, uh, you can like look around and yeah. I'm not going to tell you bits to do, but I would play one of these and go, does anyone have 13 life? Ah. Oh now and then just tap it sad face you know anytime that there's a, a card that's a little bit silly i i like playing it and these common ones are going to be fun and uh when it does come in untapped uh that's going to be a uh, a moment where everybody can rejoice and how often does somebody love when you play a land I don't even think people will love when you play these. Uh, but that's going to be it. Like I said, I wanted to jump on, talk about these uh, these lands in standard. I didn't know if I, I was going to do that. Um, but mostly talk about the Verge. They're very cool. Uh, I love that all of them, um, you know, have fl flavor text that's very similar. Uh, it, it's, it's good world building, and I'm happy we have another rare land cycle let's just keep the price down a little bit uh so before i go be sure to put in the comments what you think of these uh dual lands uh did you read them and just kind of you know blaze past it and not even re really realize how they worked the first time if that was you I understand I do that all the time. So let me know what your impressions are. And uh, if you agree with me that we need to keep this a little uh, commander secret. All right, guys, thank you for watching. And I will see you next time in the fort.